are afloat. And like ships at sea, they are tuned to the voices of a distant world for news. Alert Bay calling. This is Alert Bay, British Columbia. Today's forecast is good for all the Canadian Pacific coast. Weather sunny after early morning. Wind southwest 20 in Queen Charlotte Strait. The massive timber for which the region is renowned supports their homes and their way of life. The forest is their livelihood. Once a week, a plane delivers the mail. There are logging companies inland, but for the most part, these people work alone along the shore. The storekeeper is also the postmaster. Samoom Sound, in northern British Columbia, is an outpost of a vanishing breed of individualists. The logging companies have roads to haul the giant trees to the water. Here, massive log booms are assembled to be towed down the coast. But the others have only their boats and the simplest machinery for the job. take their homes with them, wherever the work is, tying up at the water's edge, with amenities attached. The whole forest is their backyard. For the generation growing up in this community of water dwellers, life preservers and boat travel are taken as much for granted as are traffic lights and automobiles by city children. Some of these youngsters have never seen the lights of a city and can't imagine a world where children don't go swimming in the hot weather but must play in wire and asphalt enclosures. Self-reliance and the habit of creating their own amusement develop early in a land without community centers or television sets. But their schooling is not neglected. The one-room schoolhouse works to the same standards as schools in the city. Freighter Alaska Prince reports expected arrival Simoom Sound about 11 this morning. Any messages, Simoom? Over. Simoom answering. Nothing from here. The freighter calls once a week. It brings the water dwellers thronging in from the surrounding area. Boat day is the time to get fresh food supplies. The old green gas boat is well known to everyone. Charlie Kilborn has been here 50 years and runs a one-man sawmill. Never a fellow to mince words, Charlie works his own way, and that's how he likes it. Nobody to boss, nobody bossing him. The forest ranger is next to arrive with his trim, up-to-date cruiser. Other floating home owners are close behind. The ranger is a friend of great importance to the water dwellers. His boat, the Nasika, represents the only real protection against their greatest enemy, fire. Number one, get that party moving up for it. All in that spring. More, more. The freighter may bring relatives or friends from other places along the coast, as well as supplies of every sort. But it also brings to these isolated families afloat a feeling of being in touch with the faraway centers to the south. Protecting the forest, supervising logging operations, assessing the quantities and value of timber stands. These are all part of the ranger's job. He may even agree to drop off a letter to someone who can't call in if the address happens to fall within his rounds of inspection. A package.
package of seeds for Mrs. Lane. This resourceful woman has turned her home on the water into a floating garden, a hobby that leaves her little time to be lonely and introduces a feminine touch of order into the evergreen wilderness. Charlie Kilbourne's sawmill supplies most of his neighbors with the wood they need for building. Everything's built of wood here, naturally enough. But this adds to the ranger's problems, for these enterprising people live with a paradox. They are surrounded by water, yet the one thing that threatens their homes, their places of work, and the very substance from which they earn their living is fire. Earth water, and fire, once thought of as the components of the physical universe, to these water dwellers still real elements of life in their quiet coves away from the crowded cities. Hi, sweetie. these modern houseboat families to seek anchorage so far from their fellow men. For Janet Dark and her husband, the reason is simple. Isolation is part of their lot. But here, masters of a life they can shape to their own liking, they know a freedom that most city dwellers have forgotten. A territory of a thousand square miles keeps the ranger and his crew on the move. Vancouver headquarters calling the Sika. Come in, the Sika. The Sika here. Go ahead, Vancouver. Conditions show continued high temperature, low humidity. Keep in touch. Over. Roger and out. Now the danger becomes acute. The dry season has begun. Charlie Kilbourne is out on the water in his old green gas boat, towing home a log, when the ranger ties up at his sawmill for a check on the machinery. This makeshift production line works all right for Charlie, but it's not exactly a model of industrial safety, particularly now with a forest like a tinderbox. That homemade spark arrester clinches matters. Charlie is closed down for repairs. Well, the ranger goes on his way. And before long, Charlie gets back and reads the message without a spark of appreciation. But later, there's a more serious sort of tension at the ranger station as the ranger stops off to check the situation for firefighters. Testing of equipment is already in progress. The men work quickly with few words. In the dry season, a sense of unease fills the forest and those who live by it. With no let up in the heat, Conditions grow worse. 
the danger is at its peak. All work in the forest stops. The land of the water dwellers lies waiting. Airlines report smoke back of James Bay. Looks like small fire above old log camp. Keep the contact. Over. Roger and out. to bring the old green gas boat chugging along. The ranger's glad to see Charlie. Right now he can use an old hand. Charlie hasn't quite forgotten that little matter of the spark arrester. He'll have something to say about that later. But the fire comes first. shows that although it hasn't gone far yet, it's spreading rapidly. Firefighters soon have the fire under control. Before sunset, they are ready to leave. Somebody radio to camp. Tell them we're coming in for supper. Yeah, tell them we're bringing the smoke ring. In spite of weariness, high spirits prevail. The enemy has been checked, and these men experience a rare kind of solidarity. Charlie has forgotten his grievance. What he thinks of now is the name Nasika, an Indian word for ours. Like the first word in the missionary's prayer, Nasika, father, our father, our boat, watching over our forests, our way of life.